Hi, my name is Jason DeSalvo from Federa Guitars, and we're back to start working on saddle height, which adjusts the height of your strings and ultimately your action. We're assuming in this segment that you've already properly adjusted your truss rod and have properly tuned your instrument to pitch. If you've done both of those, we can start talking about saddle height. So there is a relationship between the amount of bow in your neck and your saddle height and knowing the relationship that works well for you is a vital part of setting up a bass in a way that you're ultimately going to love. Right? I happen to play with fairly low action. I have a fairly light right-handed technique and a light touch on my left hand, so I don't have a lot of bow in my neck. So once I've gotten my neck appropriately adjusted, which is fairly flat, I start to work on the saddle height. If you're a player that tends to play harder, dig in more, have a harder right hand technique, you know, really kind of pounds the frets, you're going to want more bow in your neck. Now recognize you can introduce bow in your neck and that will raise the string height. You can also raise the saddles, which will raise the string height. And that's what we refer to as action. The action is whether or not you have low action and the strings are very close to the fret or high action where they're further away. Low action is generally considered to be quote unquote easier to play. Higher action potentially gives you deeper and richer tone, but also may lead to hand fatigue, tendonitis, and things like that. So finding the right balance for you is vital. What I do want to say is once you know how your neck is supposed to be set up and you've dialed in the right amount of relief in your neck, unless the cheese seasons have changed, after you make your saddle height adjustments, you don't ever have to adjust your saddle height again. When the seasons change and your action changes as a result, that's because the wood in the neck is moving and you'll have to go back to step one and readjust your truss rod. But then all you'll have to do is check and make sure that your saddle height didn't move. And as long as you didn't move it and it's on a well-made base, you shouldn't really have to adjust your saddle height more than once. That's a misconception that a lot of people make the mistake of. They very often, as the seasons change, change their action by adjusting the saddle height. You don't want to do that. It's that proper relationship between bend in the neck or bow in the neck and saddle height. So now, getting back to basics. We've got the right bow in the neck here. The instrument is in tune. As I mentioned earlier, I like these general rulers. They're very sturdy. They're made out of steel. Um, they've got a scale on one side that's in 60 fourths of an inch and on the other side in 30 seconds of an inch. What I do when I adjust my saddle height, the first thing that I'm going to do is lay the base down. And make sure here on the bridge, if you've got a bridge that allows for adjustable side to side movement of where the string sits, okay, you want to make sure that it is perfectly set. So by way of example, on my bass, this bass is set up with 19 millimeter string spacing. That means that from the center of each string to the center of the next string, there should be a uniform 19 millimeters between each. Okay. The reason I have to check this before adjusting my saddle height is virtually all bass guitars have a radius fingerboard. And if I move a string in one direction or another along the plane of the fingerboard, okay, this, the, the relative height of that string to the fret will change. So I want to make sure I dial in my string spacing first. Many of you will have bases that do not have an adjustable bridge where you can't adjust the string back and forth in the saddles. If you don't have that option, you just skip this step. For those of you that do, it goes like this. Right? I lay my ruler down right in the middle of the first string, this in this case the G string, and I'm looking to see that the center line on 19 millimeters comes right up to the center line on the D string, and here it does. Once again, the cardinal rule in all bass setup, every time I make an adjustment of any kind, I have to tune my bass again. Now, holding the bass in playing position, with my ruler now on the English side, right, I'm going to adjust my action 
for low action for me. The important thing is, in the first segment, we talked about getting your neck height with the appropriate amount of bow, and I showed you with the automotive feeler gauges what I used, and we showed you that small graphic that showed you what you might use if you were playing with medium action or high action, right? So once you've dialed that in, now you're going to adjust your string height. The reason I like this ruler is, now you'll notice with my left hand, I'm going to fret the string as I measure it in first position, again, to take the nut height out of the equation, okay? So I'm gonna, as I adjust the G string, fret the G string, this ruler sits perfectly flat on two frets. A lot of people like to measure string height at the 12th fret or at any given fret. If you look at it, if you try to do it on one fret, do you see the way this ruler rocks back and forth? Okay, when the ruler's rocking, it makes it very hard to be certain that you're getting a dead level measurement. When you use the last two frets of the instrument, you can sight underneath the string and see exactly where the string lines up on the ruler. Now, for my action, I actually go with 1 16th of an inch on the G string, okay? That's very low action. That's pretty much about as low as you want to set up. Um, and then what I do is, this happens to be set up right. Coming down, I go with right around the same, okay? 1 16th or 2 30 seconds, right? Um, because that's what this is graduated in. Uh, on the D, right about the same on the A, but I like a little bit more on the E because the E has a lot more vibrational energy, it's a lower frequency and it tends to move more and I don't want it to buzz. So on my E string, I go with basically two and a half, 30 seconds. Okay, so I give it a little bit more height. Now this is set up properly right now. If you had a B string or a C string, if you were playing a five or a six, right, you'd start with your C and work backwards down to your B. And again, the E string has a little bit more height than the strings above. Your B string would have even more height still, right? Those things really are just, they've got a lot of vibrational energy and you gotta keep them further away from the fingerboard and the frets to get clean tone. Now again, I was using 1 16th for very low action with a flat board you might be considerably higher than that, and it's very important that you experiment with that and know what you love. Once you know what you love, you write those numbers down, and then it's very easy to recreate it, okay? So, if I wanted to adjust my saddle height up, I would adjust the string, uh, I would adjust the saddle. You'll notice most quality base bridges will have two adjustment points for each saddle. It's vital that the saddles be level. You don't want the saddle adjusted like this. Do you see the way that's on an angle? Even though it might be the right height, it's going to give you a lot of buzz and vibration in the saddle. You have to really work hard to make sure that you dial it in and adjust it straight. So I make a little adjustment. I go back and check here. Now this is too high, right? Because we know that I just raised it. Just right again, okay? Once I've done that, and you would work through each saddle, okay, and get it dialed in right for the height for you, okay? Again, like I said, as a rule of thumb, you start with your highest string, work to your lowest pitched string, okay? And your measurements on your C, your G, your D, and your A will be roughly similar. Um, some people like slight increases between them, but then by the time you jump to the E, you need to increase the height a little bit, and again, more so on the B. So for me, I'm doing on this base, okay, uh, two thirty seconds height above the 24th fret. That's in between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. Two thirty seconds, two thirty seconds. On the E, I jump to three thirty seconds. If I had a B, I would jump to four thirty seconds. Okay, pretty straightforward. After I do it, I go back and tune it up, make sure the entire instrument is in pitch. Then I do a visual check. I look down the instrument 
and I kind of roll it back and forth to see that visually my strings look like they're roughly following the contour of the fingerboard. You'll see more arcing there if you have a very, um, if you have a very low radius fingerboard, like if you had a fingerboard that was a nine or seven and a half inch radius the whole way, that's gonna have a lot more curvature than ours. On, on, on this base here, we start at a nine inch curvature uh, radius at the first fret, and by the time we're up at the 24th fret, we're somewhere between 18 and 20 inch radius. So it's relatively flat, but there is still a conical shape to the, uh, to the fingerboard. You give the bass a play, and it should feel like home, right? So you've now set the truss rod height, and you've also set the action height by adjusting the saddles. Your bass should now feel exactly like you always expect it to feel right after it's properly set up. In a minute, we're going to come back and talk about adjusting pickup height. That's the next step of the process.